It is a very special pleasure to have this young lady on the show here on Channel 5. She's appearing at the Sands Hotel, Helen Reddy. Welcome. Thank you. And it's such a pleasure to have you in Las Vegas, which I know this is not your first time here. No, not at all. I've been coming here for many, many years. And have you always been treated well and great audiences? And oh, yes, always. But you wouldn't want to live here. I couldn't deal with the climate. <laughs> the no, desert. It's, it's, it's too similar to, uh, to Australia, actually. I, I suffered a great deal with hay fever and asthma and all kinds of allergies when I lived in Australia. I would have never thought that. Helen. Yeah, dust, dust is what I'm allergic to. So well, I know, can handle heat, but it's got to be humid. Really? Mm -hmm. But Australia has this image of, of tranquil uh, beaches and ocean and glorious climate. That's always what I thought of Australia. It, but it is mostly desert. It's a very dry country. Is that right? Mm. Phenomenal. How often do you get home? Actually, you're a, you're a U.S. citizen, so... Right. Um, I get down there, I'd say, at least once a year. Mm -hmm. I'm going down again um, the end of October, November. Um, sort of a, a delayed honeymoon. I got married eight weeks ago. Congratulations. Thank you. Very and nice. my bridegroom, uh, his mother, is from New Zealand. She mm -hmm. was a war bride, and he's never been there. So uh, he's got aunts and uncles and cousins he's never met, and I would like him to meet my family in Australia, so we're going to do a kind of South Pacific swing. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Where were you married? We were married in, in Los Angeles. And you live there? Yeah. Where, did you say Brentwood? Right. And how long have you been in L.A.? I've been living in L.A. since uh, 68. Really? Mm. Well, L.A. is one of my favorites, and I always, uh, Captain and Tennille, I told you, were just on, and we, I was talking about their L.A. experiences and kind of the good and bad side of L.A. Do you have a, is there a good and bad side to it for you or, or not? Well, of course, I don't like the smog. Yeah. Nobody likes the smog. But uh, apart from that, there's a wonderful climate in L.A., and it's, it's uh, very convenient, I think. Yeah. I like it. Well, you, you were just, uh, you appeared on the Country Music Awards, which yes. is one of my favorites, and that was in L.A. Right. I don't know why it wasn't in Nashville, but anyway, uh, we were talking about Willie Nelson, mm. and Willie gave you a, a big smooch there. He certainly did, right uh, on the lips, on camera. <laughs> on national TV. And we just met. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's got to be uh, conducive of Willie Nelson. He really is a big favorite, and he appears at Caesars Palace, as you know, a mm. great deal. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Willie's. Well, there are many, and... Uh, the album Stardust is right. one of your favorites. Yes, I've worn that copy out. <laughs> <laughs> In your show, you do some country tunes. Yeah, I do do a couple of country Delta songs. Dawn is Delta Dawn, of course. You have, to, you have to do that one. Everybody loves that Could one. not do that That one. was a crossover, wasn't it? Yes. Yes, I think, uh, I think so much of music. No, it's really hard to, to bag music to say this song is a country song or this song yeah. is a, a folk song because music's such a hybrid now. Mm -hmm. In your days in New York, where when you first came to this country, that's where you were, right? Mm -hmm. What what occurred there? What took place? Was that where you were, where you were breaking in the business, or you were getting to become famous? What what occurred there? Well, actually, I, I uh, the reason I was in New York was because I came to the states as the result of winning a contest, and the a contest a contest a talent contest, How and the first prize was a trip to New York, and a recording contract uh, in the United States. And, I never uh, thought those things really happened. Well, they don't. <laughs> but this time it did. They don't. Well, I, I thought they did too. I, I, looking back, I guess I was rather naive. But uh, I got to New York and uh, somebody from the sales department in the record company took me to lunch. And, you know, we just, we just chatted in general. And at the end of the lunch, he said, well, have a nice time while you're here in New York, dear. And do give us a call and say goodbye before you go back. Oh, no. And I said, well, wait a minute, what about, what about the recording contract? And he said, oh, no, 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 you, you must have misunderstood. He said, there, there was no recording contract. He said, the first prize was an audition for a recording contract. I said, well, okay, when do I audition? He said, oh, that, that won't be necessary. They sent us a tape of your voice from Australia, and you sing very nicely, dear, but what we're really looking for is a male group. And I'd learned several years later that there had never been any tape. They had just given me the brush off. So be, be wary when you oh. enter contests. Well, was this promoted in Australia? Yes. Or promoted outside the US? Well, it was run on a, an Australian TV station, but it was sponsored by um, 
Pan Am and uh, How interesting. this American record company and, of course, the Australian TV station. The point of it is, if it hadn't happened, we, who knows if Helen Reddy would be where she is now, so... Well, I'd, I'd have gotten to the States one way or another. I was very determined to, to come here. And I Am Woman, when was that written? I wrote that song, well, actually, um, it was written off and on over a period of 18 months. What I now refer to as the first draft of the song was on my first album. And um, Mike Frankovich was, uh, was making a women's lib comedy, mm -hmm. or so it was advertised at the time, and he was looking for a song to use as the theme song. And they wanted to use I Am Woman as the theme, so... Uh, we decided to put it out as a single. It was too short. So I wrote an extra verse, added a third verse, and we re-recorded it. And that was the version that's on my third album, and that's the version that became a hit. But the song itself was around for a year and a half before it... Uh... As a single or from an album? No, no, it was, it was an album cut. Isn't that fascinating? Mm. But wasn't that the big, the real big one? It's actually, it's not my biggest hit. Angie Baby was the biggest seller. Hmm. But uh, I Am Woman uh, made the difference in the, in the sense that we, uh, we, we couldn't get any airplay. The radio stations simply wouldn't play it. I had so many disc jockeys would say to me, oh, I hate that record. But do you know, it's a funny thing. My wife loves it. Oh. And uh, I, I went on television and sang the song. If it, any TV show that would have me on that, that, that had music, I went on and I sang I Am Woman 19 times <laughs> on television. <laughs> and we kind of forced radio play. Women would start calling up the stations and requesting it, and, uh, and eventually they just had to play it. Well, I've got to be honest with you, Helen. Helen says just before we go on, she says, Dennis, this is August the 26th, Women's Equality Day. <laughs> and I went, Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> but uh, in line with your song and with your activities with the uh, women's movement, um, it, it's unique that you would know that. I mean, I'm sure a lot of women do, but, but that date is when the women got the right to vote in the U.S. That's right. August 26, 1920 was the date that women got the right to vote. How and do you know this? Do well, you I know this because of my in involvement in the, in the women's movement, you know, and it's, it's interesting to go back and, and read uh, what, was, what was going on at the, at the time in relation to the arguments that they give about women's rights now. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the arguments against women giving the vote was that it would split up the family. Oh, they goodness. said that, you know, if a, if a woman votes differently from her <laughs> husband, then it, it's going to cause a breakup of the marriage. Mm. And if she votes the same as her husband, well, he's already representing her at the polls. So therefore, there was no need to give her a vote. So you can see how ridiculous that argument really? is. And I, I feel the same way about some of the arguments they, they give today about the Equal Rights Amendment. Helen opened last Wednesday night at the Sands Hotel, and you'll be there through... September 4th. September the 4th. And... Uh, the Sands is, is an exceptional hotel. You know the history of the Sands with Mr. Oh, yes. Sinatra and all the great names that have yes. been there. And Helen was telling me about the first time you appeared in Vegas. You've got to run that past us. That's interesting. Yeah, I can't remember the exact date, whether it was 68 or 69, but around there. And I opened for Tiny Tim at the Fremont. <laughs> Tiny Tim. Oh, that's fascinating. I tell you why. I saw Tiny Tim at Caesars when he was mm -hmm. when he was first a big star, you know, and I remember that so vividly. I did the same thing with Jose Fel Feliciano. He opened at Caesars when he, you know, became a big star. But I remember seeing this guy in this falsetto voice thinking, what have I done wrong that this guy's doing this? And, you know, must have been different, you know, backing up Tiny Tim at that time. Well you, were, well, you weren't even backing him up, were no, you? Or no, was that was, when he hit? Was that when he was big? Uh, yes, yes, he was, oh. well, you know, he was the headline act. He so you were the supporting uh, act. And I had, I had never recorded at that time. Uh -huh. I had no following it at all. In fact, I was uh, called in at the last moment. The, the act that was supposed to open for him had fallen out. There was some problem with their visas or, I yeah. don't know. And uh, so I, I kind of filled in at two days' notice for that one. Was it uh, anything? highlight that time or, or not or did you just kind of breeze through it <laughs> i just did my job <laughs> <laughs> well you're you know this is uh, 1983 at the sands hotel and las vegas has gone through all kinds of weird changes mm -hmm. and i'm always interested from a star's viewpoint what you have seen occur here good or bad in the past few years oh a lot of i've seen a lot of changes in this town Good or bad? Over the years. Um, both, I think. Um, 
Of course, you know, it's, this town has been hit very hard by the economic recession. Mm -hmm. But um, I think it, it, it will survive. It will change. Mm -hmm. But I think it will survive. What about the entertainment policy in general? It's really people like yourselves who have made Vegas what it is. You know, let's face it, you know, it started out with star policy and it's always been that. And it was a place people could go to see the top names in the business. Well, I, I know myself. Um, I would always say, you know, so why don't we go see so-and-so, he's playing at such and such a hotel, mm -hmm. and, and you would come to Vegas for the particular purpose of seeing a, a show. That was the uh, draw card. Mm -hmm. um, but there are a lot of stars who overpriced themselves. There's no question about that. They just mm -hmm. got greedy and asked for too much money. And I think, uh, I think a lot of the hotels were right to put their feet down and say, no, we, we won't pay those kind of prices. Yeah. I've heard that before, and without ever knowing what those prices really were, you know, I've heard 300000 350000 per week with some of the performers, and I guess it's probably true, isn't it? Outrageous. Outrageous. I, I went and saw a particular show that was 350000 a week, and I did not see $350,000 on that stage. I felt ripped off, yeah. and I'm sure a lot of people in the audience did too. And uh, you can only do that to, to the audience once. Mm -hmm. They won't come back a second time. Yeah. I, I can't tell you how nice that is to hear you say that because I'm sure other people have felt that and coming from a major star that that is very nice and if you having that viewpoint I have a feeling your show is they're probably getting their money's worth because for you to to say that you must think that and feel that right I would like to think that I would I would like to think and and people have told me that the comments from the audience are that they did get their money's worth that mm. it was value and that that's important that is um, that is very good. You know something else, Helen? I've seen you a lot on Solid Gold, mm -hmm. which we play here on Channel 5. And uh, w was that fun? Fun times yes. on Solid Gold? Yes, those shows are always Is that fun produced to do. in L.A.? That's done in L.A., yes. That gets but, a lot of play, that but show. But like a lot of music shows, it's, it's done in, in bits and pieces. Um, <laughs> you were a week before it, right, or whatever, right. and somebody else. Yeah. They kind of, when, I, when I did the uh, Midnight Special, Oh, yeah. um, you know, people used to say to me, oh, isn't it fun? You must have met this one and that one. And I never met anybody. <laughs> I would go into the studio and it would take maybe 15 minutes to do my part. I would stand in front of the camera and I'd say, and now let's welcome so-and-so. Cut. And say, and now how about a big hand for Scranson? Cut. And say, and now let's welcome. And I, it would be over, and you know, and that was it. And I'd go home and I never saw anybody. Oh. And they would spend days. Editing taping all these other groups when I wasn't there. Yeah. Mm. Do you take solid gold material into your show, in, like at the Sands? How do you mean? Some of the things you've done on solid gold or any of the performances you did? Well, uh, we, do, uh, we do a lot of the hits, of course. Yeah. I, you know, when I go to see an artist who has hits, I expect to hear my particular favorites, and I understand that. So uh, there, that. there are certain songs I will always have to do. Great. But I like to do um, new things, and of course I'm working just with a, um, a small group. We're not working with an orchestra. I have mm -hmm. a, a rock band and, uh, and synthesizers, and it's a much more modern sound. Mm -hmm. And that's fun. And I'm also using a, a video in the show. Oh, yeah, you said something about that. Yeah. How interesting. I like to hear that. Uh, as a backdrop, a video going on in the back? In the well, background? no, we, there, there is a point in the, in the show that, you know, a screen comes down, we run the video, and I go off and change costume while it's on. Oh, I see. But it's a, it's a very special video huh. because uh, it was made by my daughter, who's a, a, a film producer. She's in the, the video making business. Oh, that's great. Helen, I've only got about two or three minutes here. Who are some of your favorites? Who impressed you as you were coming up to stardom in the business? Are there any offhand that you can think oh, of? Oh, well, you know, I'm a, I'm a third generation performer and I was fortunate to be exposed to a lot of artists uh, my, my whole life. Musically, uh, sound-wise, the influences uh, in my teenage period, I would have to say, would be Chuck Berry, Ray Charles, Peggy Lee, Really? Yeah, and I was always uh, attracted to, if I went to see an artist, I, I was always attracted to solo artists. And I can remember going to see uh, the show of, of, of Marlena Dietrich when she did her one-woman show in, in Australia. And I sat in that audience. I took, I think, about 11 pages of notes just on her lighting. So... Um, How interesting. Yeah. Wow. Fascinating. Those that 
that would impress you. I would mm. never have thought Marlena Dietrich. How interesting. Oh, yes. Well, she's a, a female. And a well, I, nothing, I, you know, yeah. but as far as uh, interesting. Huh. Well, anyway, Helen, I hope your stay here is very pleasant, very successful. I'm sure it is, and you are well treated and taken care of, and uh, we give you the very best of everything, and I hope you come back many, many times because... Uh, Fortunately, in a business like mine, I get to meet people such as yourself, and, and Helen has been so nice and, and comfortable to be with and everything you expect and of a, of a great star. But it's really <laughs> nice you. having you on the show. Thank you, Dennis. Have a good time in Vegas. All right. And I'll see you over the weekend. I hope I'll be able I to see so. the show. Okay. Thanks a lot. Stay with us because uh, we've got Charlie Crundon coming up uh, with the latest report in Fish and Game throughout Las Vegas and Southern Nevada. We'll be right back.